On our quest for sourdough, we discovered already many ways to make sourdough. Nevertheless, this time I would like to take you on a different trip. One that is dedicated to chickpea fermentation. But first, let me take you to the sourdough library before we start this journey. Back in 2009, we were called upon by Baker in Lebanon and he asked us to write down and register his uh, recipe of a chickpea fermentation. Now, a chickpea fermentation is not really a sourdough fermentation, but anyhow, that baker had two sons who suggested that then when they would take over the bakery, they would stop using this fermentation and switch to commercial yeast. The father got a bit disappointed and wanted his recipe to be protected and preserved for the future and as such he shared it with us to be sure that when his sons would realize that what they are doing with commercial yeast is actually not the same as what their father and his ancestors were doing. And it inspired us to create a sourdough library in order to protect the heritage of sourdough. So I went to Turkey and Greece to discover more about this amazing chickpea fermentation. Our first stop is Crete, the beautiful Greek island in the Mediterranean Sea, where we will meet Dimitris. Together with his wife Eleni, they manage the bakery Kritikos Furnos in Heraklion. For as long as he can remember, he has always been baking. He learned the skills from his father, Stylianos. Hello, Dimitris. Are you ready? I am eager to discover how to make the chickpea bread. Here I am a very good village, which is the most important thing that is here in this area from the archaeology, in this area. Είναι μοναδικά γιατί είναι ένα σπόρο που δεν τον έχει αγγίξει καθόλου η τεχνολογία και μπορούμε και το βρίσκουμε χωρί φάρμακα, χωρί χημικά, για να μπορέσουμε να κάνουμε μια ειδική μαγιά που φτιάχνουμε ένα ψωμί. Ε, αυτό το ψωμί το φτιάχνουμε σε όλη την περιοχή, ε, στη μισή Κρήτη. Από το Ηράκλειο και προ το Λασίθι. Σε αυτή την περιοχή φτιάχνουμε αυτό το ψωμί. Και το φτιάχνουμε από πολύ παλιά. Can you tell me a bit more about the history of the chickpeas? Για πάρα πολλά χρόνια σε, αυτό το, σε αυτή την περιοχή τα καλλιεργούν. Όπω τα βρήκανε από του παλιότερου που ζούσαν εδώ και όλοι λένε ότι προέρχονται από τη μηνοϊκή εποχή. Και δεν τα έχει πειράξει και δεν έχει πειράξει καθόλου η σύγχρονη ε, αγροτική παραγωγή. I would like to see how to make the bread. Πολύ ευχαρίστω, θα πάμε να σα δείξω αμέσω. This century old way to make bread rice is intriguing. And I'm ready to discover how it works for real. Yesterday, Dimitris promised me that he would show me how to make the breads and I'm on my way to his bakery to discover. On the chickpea field, you spoke about the bread that you are making with the chickpeas, so I, I would like to see that bread and that's, that's what you are going to show me now. Of course, I can show you. Here we are in the stage where, after 12 hours, we left the rice in the water, in the water, να δημιουργήσουν αυτή, αυτό το προζύμι. Είμαστε στη φάση που αυτό το προζύμι θα μπει μέσα στο αλεύρι για να φτιάξουμε το ψωμί. Αυτό το ψωμί που θα φτιάξουμε ε, προέρχεται από την αρχαία Ελλάδα και λέγεται, ε, σήμερα η σημερινή του λέξη είναι επτάζιμο. Απο... Μύρσε, σμέλ. Απορώ ποιος αρχαίος φαντάσκει ότι με αυτό το πράγμα που μυρίζει τόσο άσχημα μπορεί να κάνει ένα νόστιμο ψωμί. Είναι πραγματικά άξιο απορίας. This is so difficult to describe. I think you should once try it at home to really discover this very unique flavor. Όταν θα μπει στο φούρνο, δεν θα έχει ξανακούσει τέτοια μυρωδιά. Μυρίζει υπέροχα. Έχουμε βάλει δύο τύπου από αλεύρι. Το ένα είναι σκυρό σιτάρι τη περιοχή, ολική αλέσεω. Και το άλλο είναι λευκό. Βάζουμε πάντα ζεστό νερό. Ο του χοντέρ. Ε, και προσέχουμε όλο αυτό να μην πέσει ποτέ κάτω από 30 βαθμούς. Πόσο, 5 κιλά, 5 κιλά αλεύρι βάλαμε. 5 κιλά αλεύρι. 5 κιλά φλαουρ και πόσο μόνο νερό. 5 κιλά νερό, ζεστό. Οκ. Και αυτό είναι όλο. Δεν υπάρχει σαλτ. Δεν υπάρχει σαλτ. 
όχι αλάτι, όχι μαγιά. Τώρα είναι έτοιμο. Θα το σκεπάσουμε και θα το αφήσουμε να ξεκουραστεί για μια ώρα. Σε ένα μέρος που υπάρχει ζέστη, κοντά σε ένα φούρνο. It's important that the dough does not go below 30 degrees, but it's warm enough here in the bakery. We are sure that the dough's temperature will not drop below 30 degrees centigrade. Το προσδέμα είναι έτοιμο. Τώρα, τώρα θα βάλουμε μόνο, θα προσθέσω μόνο αλεύρι και λίγο πιπέρι, το οποίο του ταιριάζει πάρα πολύ. Εκτός από το του ταιριάζει, το βοηθάει και στο να φουσκώσει το πιπέρι. Νιώθει τη ζεστασιά, γιατί είπαμε ότι χρειάζεται ζέστη. The temperature is, it's, it's like 37-40 degrees. 34, 35, 40. I would give the baby, the baby a bath. Yes. Exactly this. Like the... Like body temperature. Η ζύμη μας τώρα είναι έτοιμη και μπορούμε να φτιάξουμε το ψωμί. I like the dough. It's a very, it's a very good texture actually. It's unbelievable, but the, the, the smell of this thing is still awful. I'm really looking forward to get the, the good flavor out of it. Τώρα πρέπει να ξεφουρνίσουμε. Ήρθε η ώρα. Να δοκιμάσουμε τι φτιάξαμε. Finish. And now, how do you describe this flavor? Δεν έχω λόγια. It's not something that I know. It's something totally new for me. Θα έλεγα ότι είναι μια γεύση που ψάχνει το τυρί, μια γεύση. But even I'm surprised that there is no salt inside, but still, there's quite a lot of a lot of flavor, and it's not what you expect from a from a bread without salt. I'm uh, I'm really impressed with the result, and I'm, I'm I'm glad you showed me this. But still, there is one thing that you didn't show me, and that's how you make the chickpea sourdough. Now I know how to make the bread using the amazing fermentation power of the chickpeas. I'm curious to see how Dimitris obtains this. I meet him at his house where he is willing to share this process and recipe with us. Dimitris, finally we are at your place. Can you explain me why we are here? The prosimi to fiaklo me kathe meras edio magazia, se megales posotetes. Εδώ στο σπίτι φτιάχνουμε προζύμι όταν κάτι δεν πάει καλά. Στο ένα μαγαζί ή στο άλλο. All right, that's very interesting. So, finally, I see you have a meal. You have the chickpeas, so... And the hot water. Later. Very hot water. All right, so how do we start? Χρησιμοποιούμε περίπου 300 γραμμάρια ρεβίθια. 300 grams of chickpea. Τα οποία πρέπει να είναι φρεσκοαλεσμένα. Να είναι να τα έχω μαλέσει Μόλις πριν από μερικά λεπτά. And now you are milling them in the same jar? Ναι, το ίδιο βάζω. Είναι ένα βάζο που το έχω αποστηρώσει. So, we are going to add 1.5 liter of hot water of 60 degrees. We will mix it and then we put it in the oven for uh, 8 hours at 40 degrees. So, well, let's, let's get the water, eh? Ελένη, μπορείς να παρακαλώ μου φέρεις λίγο ζεστό νερό. All right. Υπέρο. Yeah, okay. It is 60 degrees. So, he's now removing the, the, the skin, the foam that is actually occurring on top. Εικάζω ότι επειδή το φιλός πάει στην πάνω πλευρά, σταματάει τη ροή του οξυγόνου προς τα κάτω, και δεν μπορεί να πετύχει το προζύμι. Και τώρα θα το φυλάξουμε στο φούρνο. All right. So, 8 hours at 40 degrees in the oven. Okay. So, I think we have everything. You showed me how to make this. We've baked bread with it. So, I'm very grateful and I thank you very much. Και εγώ ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Let's put it in the oven and go for a coffee. 
As this method is used in lots of places around the Mediterranean Sea and the Middle East, it's good to have a second opinion. I'm heading to Denizli, surrounded by high mountains in the southwestern part of Turkey that is called Anatolia. A well-known landmark there is Pamukkale, with its lime terraces. There I'm going to meet Mahir and Gönül from Karahoyuk Bakery. They are also using chickpeas, but in a slightly different way. We have the same here as we've seen in, uh, in Greece, they like to keep it very warm. Of course you cannot smell it, but I guarantee you that the smell is awful. The same as we had in Heraklio. So let's see what, uh, what this will become. Once in the bakery with Mahir and his wife Gunnel, it's time to make some bread. Unlike Dimitris, he pre-ferments the chickpeas preparation with flour before making the final dough. He also uses salt that is added to the whole wheat and refined flour. During the mixing, the consistency of the dough is adjusted with some extra flour. Once ready, the dough is covered and rested for about 20 minutes. This dough was prepared with, with the water from the chickpeas and it has been fermenting since 4 o'clock this morning. So it, it's now like 8.15, so 4 hours and you have this incredible fermentation that is going on. Hamurumuz e, şekil verme aşamasına geldi. Hamurumuzu çıkarıp masada şekillendirme işlemini başlayacağız. No scale is used here. The size of the dough balls is measured by using their hand palm. Gunul shows me how the dough balls are flattened until the desired size. The resting time now depends on the fermentation power of the chickpeas. As soon as the marks from the hands on the dough disappear, the baking can start. Süzme yoğurttan sulandırılmış olduğumuz e, karışımı biz e, yoğurt deniyor da biz bunun adına haşıl diyoruz. Bunu ekmekleri e, üstünü kızarması için teker teker e, şekil verdiğimiz hamurların üzerine süreceğiz. Mahir is taking care of the baking. The heat in the bakery is increasing. Customers who are attracted to the flavor coming out of the bakery are queuing to get some of these delicacies. Mahir hands me over half of the bread. The flavor is great, just like in Crete. Difficult to describe. This is butter. Köylülerin tereyağı. Doğal olduğundan böyle bu. So white. Evet. Again, I'm. I'm very surprised that from that very bad smelling dough they are able to turn this into something that is amazingly delicious. So I believe we're almost done but I'm still I'm still curious when we arrived the the pre-dough was ready but there is one thing missing and that is I want to see where do you get your fermentation power from. Bu mayayı ben evde hazırlıyorum. Bunu öğrenmeniz için beraber eve gitmemiz lazım. Haydi beraber eve. Okay. <laughs> okay. The preparation is a bit different than Dimitris. His mother is going to show us how she's preparing uh, the chickpea fermentation and we see already a difference with uh, what we discovered on Kreta that there we mill the chickpeas and here they are crushed so She's going to prepare it in a different way, so I would say, go for it. Four kaşık nohut. Bir kaşık şeker. One spoon of sugar. Bir kaşık tuz. Ve suyunu koyuyoruz. Bu sıcak çok ateş gibi olacak. It's warm water. Here as well, the temperature is important. A very rudimentary but effective system is put in place to make sure the chickpeas are kept warm. I believe we have again discovered something unique on our quest for sourdough. An old and not so well known way to ferment bread. We believe it's important to protect this heritage of bread baking. And that's why we decided to keep a jar of chickpeas 
here in the library.